We all know how cool mountain bikes are, but actually that's a bit of a problem because they're highly sought after by thieves because they're very easy to sell on and make good cash. Now, even if you keep your bike at home, there's a lot more to keeping your bike safe than simply chucking it in the garage and closing the door. So we're gonna take you through some of the best security tips for keeping an eye on your pride and joy. There are a lot of different elements that go into keeping your bike safe and secure. So I'm gonna break this video down into a few sections. It's gonna include where you keep your bike and where you store your bike, how you lock your bike up and the things that you lock it up with, and then some additional protection and other things you might not necessarily think of on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's start with where you keep your bikes. Depending on where you live, you're probably gonna keep your bike either inside your house, in the garden, perhaps in a shed or some sort of outbuilding, in a garage, or perhaps in some kind of workshop if you have something on the side of your house. Now, even if your bikes are kept inside your house, you're still at risk because most bike crime is actually targeted. So that suggests that perhaps people follow you to where you live or they know where you live or things like that. So it's up to you to make sure your house or wherever you keep your bike is as secure as it can possibly be. So with the basics with the house, it obviously means having decent security on your house. That means good locks, modern locks on the front and back of the house. A house alarm is a great idea to have. And then of course, you're gonna need things like insurance for your bikes, which we'll go into a little bit later in the video. Now, if you keep your bike in the garage outside, then there's a few things you need to take into account. Obviously, a concrete building is gonna be fairly secure, but the weak point is gonna be the door. So you need to make sure your door is strong, it has a good lock on it, and it's definitely worth considering having a garage door defender. Now, a defender is a kind of additional lock to mean that the door can't actually open. Now, many mountain bikers use the common garden shed to keep their bikes in. This is absolutely fine if you have a secure garden because most, most likely people would have to come through your house in order to get there. But if you have any sort of side access or any way that people can get into your garden, then you definitely need to make sure your shed is really, really secure. So you're gonna have some decent sort of shed locks on there, something like this, a quality disc style lock. It's not gonna corrode when you leave it outside in the garden and the key, the mechanism works really well. But more importantly, you really should have an anchor point in there, something to lock the bikes to, something solid, like a purpose-built ground anchor. If you're gonna have one of these in the shed, in the outside, then you really need to have a concrete base. These are designed to be used outside and inside. They're corrosion resistant, and once you fit them, you can pretty much forget about them. So it would be perfectly acceptable to lock your bike to one of these, and then you can have some kind of shelter over your bike. So you could just have a sheet to keep the moisture away from your bike, or you could go the whole hog and get yourself a dedicated bike storage unit. So these can be in the form of metal cupboards and metal lockers. There's a company called Asgard that make really industrially strong ones. Um, they're compatible with things like ground anchors. You can even get ones that've got electricity points in there for charging e-bikes and your bike lights and things like that. Now, whilst your bikes can be locked up and safe on the inside of your house, it doesn't necessarily mean your house is safe. So something actually quite nasty to talk about is a thing called the thieves code. Now, if you want to learn more about this, I'm putting a link underneath this video to Abbas Cycling. So that is the German manufacturer of locks and all things bike security. They've written a whole article about the thieves code. So I suggest you read that. But what is the thieves code? Let's just put this into perspective. You might be coming home from a riding trip with your mates and you don't realize, but you've been followed by someone in the car. Now that person will note where you live and then they might make some kind of marking on the outside of your house for another thief or another person to come back and then later correlate that to which house it is that has the bikes in and then let themselves in and nick your stuff. Now this is also something to do with organized crime. There's loads of different sort of acronyms and hieroglyphics and codes and stuff that they use. But just to show you a few that have been used in the past, um, if you see any markings like this on the outside of your building, like near the front door, or somewhere that could be seen easily passing by, uh, take a photo of them and report them to police, and then make sure you erase them and just sort of pay attention, be very vigilant with security. Pretty nasty thing to deal with. Now let's take a look at locks. Now there's a few different styles of locks available on the market and there's various different price points. My advice really is to not skimp. Buy the strongest and the heaviest duty locks you possibly can. 
because really, even though they cost a few hundred quid, it might seem excessive. How much is your bike worth? So let's take a look at the three main types of locks you can get um, and how you might use them at home. So first up, you're gonna get a U-lock, sometimes called a D-lock. Now, whilst these are incredibly strong and they're available at various different price points, you may as well take advantage of getting a bigger and stronger chain lock for home use because whilst these are excellent, they're very limited on how much you can do with them. Great for locking your bike around a lamppost or similar and great for mounting to your bike but not necessarily the best ones for home. For home, you may as well go all in and get yourself a heavy duty chain lock. There's several brands on the market and there's several styles, prices and options out there. Something else you might want to consider is getting a cable lock in addition. Now cables are typically extender locks. You shouldn't use these in place of one of the other mentioned locks. These are simply used to go through wheels and frames and as much as possible to make nicking your bikes essentially the hardest thing to do. Now with locks, there's various different price points and standards of lock, depending on which country you're in. In the UK and a lot of Europe, we use a thing called Sold Secure. There's a little label you'll find on the back of the packaging, and it'll be rated gold, silver, or bronze. Bronze being the cheapest and gold being the highest. Now those ratings correlate directly to the value of the bike that you're locking up and how much your insurer may or may not pay out in the event of it being stolen. So it's really important to make sure you correlate that and spend decent money on a lock to protect your bike. But like I say, all locks are good and all locks are better than no locks. But for home, take advantage of having a heavy duty chain and save the D locks and the other style locks for out and about. In addition to having the strongest and most secure locks you can, make sure that you use them correctly because how you use them actually is as important as having a good lock in the first place. Now all locks will come with a master key and at least one spare key, perhaps two or three. Make sure you note down the number of the key and register it if the lock company that you're buying from has a way of registering online because if you do manage to lose the keys, that's the only way you're going to be able to retrieve it, which is why you need to make a note of the number as well as registering it. Now make sure you split your keys up as well. So your day-to-day -day keys you might have, like myself, I have two or three different locks. I keep those keys together in a secret location that is not in the same room as I keep my bikes for obvious reasons. And make sure your spare keys are kept somewhere else in the house. Keep them safe, preferably in a safe or something like that. Make sure you lock your bike to something immovable. It could be a heavy duty work stand that's bolted to the ground. It could be part of your house or preferably a ground anchor that's specifically designed for that. But we're gonna to get to that in a minute. Now also you need to make sure when you do lock your bikes up, you think about a few things because the way that thieves would be breaking locks, there's various different methods. So sometimes they may freeze the locks and smash them with a hammer. Um, they still have to break the lock at that point. Now, if the locking mechanism is quite close to your frame, it's quite unlikely that they're gonna use that method. Another method might be to lever the locks open with a big bar or to use a bottle jack, the sort of jack you get on a car. So try not to give them the space in order to do that. And the final thing, to get around angle grinders and bolt croppers is to make sure that your locks aren't on the ground or at any position where they can get any point of leverage on them. Um, basically make it as hard as possible for someone to get to the locks. And the same if you have an anchor point, make sure it's tucked away. Don't leave it in the middle of the room where they can work on it. You wanna make this hard for them. Now to make sure your locks are as effective as possible, the best way is to have a dedicated anchor point. That means having some sort of ground anchor, like one of these, or perhaps a wall anchor. You can mount these on the wall, or you can get a dedicated wall anchors like this one. Uh, your bike actually hangs from this, so if you're limited on space and you get your bike out of the way, these can work out quite well. There's various different types on the market. As you can see, I've got a ground anchor in place down here with a big, heavy duty, gold secure lock on this one. I use this in combination with a whole bunch of other locks, which I basically daisy chain my bikes together and then I lock them to this lock, which is locked to the floor. So ideally there's as many locks in place as possible. CCTV, now this might sound like a bit of an extreme option, but if you have a, a garage or an outbuilding that's separate from your house, then this might be the ideal solution for you. And it's also a very good deterrent. Now there's a lot of different systems available in the market that operate in very different ways. 
and no one system is the best for any one person. So you've got to identify what works best with your property, uh, what it can see, the conditions it's going to operate in, and of course, how usable it is. So just for example, uh, these two here, this one has a hard drive that's got a monitor on it and records onto this. It has an encrypted radio signal from the camera to this. So in real time, it is filming at any point. It can loop around, so you, much like you would have with a dash cam in a car, so you're not having to use new cards all the time. And you can also access those remotely from apps. So this is a really cool system. It's an infrared camera on here. It will work outside, no problem. It's fully waterproof. Uh, this isn't all in one. This is a little bit different. This one works on its own Wi-Fi signal, or it can go via its own LAN sort of um, Ethernet cable system, depending on how you want to set it up. There's a card on the actual camera itself, but also via cloud services and your mobile app, you can get all of the information directly to your phone, which means if anything happens, you can screen grab and send that directly to the authorities. So there are a lot of different systems out there and of course you could go the whole hog and have a fully wired system but something in particular that's definitely worth factoring in is the type of lenses that they operate on and the resolution of them so i would say at minimum you want something that's full hd you want something that's going to work on infrared so it can see at night and also you might want something with a wide angle and also a standard angle the reason for that is a wide angle whilst it's very good for seeing a huge area of space it could be quite hard for facial recognition whereas if you had a standard lens aimed at your one weak point let's just say it was in a garage the weak point is the door there's more chance you're going to get a decent resolution still image of the culprit so just take that into account like i said there's a lot of different systems make sure whatever you get works for you insurance now you'd be a madman to not have your bicycles insured uh, they cost so much money these days, you'd really be an idiot not to. So definitely look into all the options available to you. There's various bike-specific insurance companies, but more often than not, you can add onto your house insurance. But they will be very specific about the policy and the payout terms and all that sort of stuff. What you'll normally find is that they will want to know a description of where your bike is locked. They'll want to know the details of the building it's in, if it has windows, all that sort of stuff. And if you have a ground anchor, they'll want a photo of the ground anchor being used. They'll want to see what sort of locks you've got. They'll want the serial numbers and things like that of your bikes. Um, so make sure you have all of that information to hand uh, to get the best possible quotes. And definitely shop around as well, because uh, it's pretty unlikely the first place you ring is going to give you the most competitive quote. But I can assure you it's definitely worth having decent insurance for your bikes. It might be really cool in the comments below to help all your other viewers out if anyone can add any advice on various different countries like the US or maybe in Germany or whatever you're watching from, um, what sort of situations and what insurance companies have worked best for you. Uh, let's try and make this a sort of a group sort of thing so everyone helps each other. Let us know in the comments underneath. Now in Europe, we have a system available called DataTag. It's essentially a forensic marking system for your bike. And once it's marked, it can be tracked virtually anywhere. It dramatically reduces the chances of you losing your bike if it is stolen, they can be retrieved. Um, and it's one of the ones that's actually enforced by a lot of insurance companies. They will quite often only insure you if you have data tag in place. Um, that's certainly for UK and Europe. Uh, I know in the US there's a similar GPS system called Sherlock. Again, there's different options available to you, um, but definitely check out all of the systems. At the end of the day, you wanna make it as hard as possible to have your bike nicked. And they come with markings for the bike that display that it's, uh, it's got a data tag system installed to it, and they're tamper-proof as well. And those alone can be a deterrent from having your bike nicked. So definitely look into things like that. Now you can do everything that we've mentioned so far and still you have to apply some common sense to make sure your bike stays safe. So firstly, you need to make sure that your entrance to your house is secure because if that's not secure, people can still get in. And likewise, if you're aware that there are people around that can identify that you're on a good bike when you return home, maybe do a lap, go around the block, don't always return straight into your house so they know where you live. Uh, the same applies if you're leaving uh, maybe a trail center when you come home from riding and you notice anyone following you. Um, although this might be a super rare occasion or you might not have even heard of this happening, it does happen. So just be vigilant about this sort of stuff. 
Uh, the same applies as to when you're putting a bike in the car, perhaps on your driveway, um, or unpacking your bike. You never know who's watching, so just take care with that sort of thing. You might live in a perfectly nice neighborhood, but you can still get dodgy people driving past So Just take note of the house number you lived in, so be very careful with that sort of stuff. Now, another common sense thing is take note of the frame number of your bike. You'd be surprised how few people actually do this. Whenever you get a bike, there is a frame number on the frame. It's sometimes and quite often on the bottom bracket shell, but it can be inside the rear dropouts. There's a number of different locations it can be on a frame, and it's completely unique to your bike. So that means your bike can be traced if the bike is found and it has been stolen, for example, um, and you will need that number for insurance purposes, and you will also need it if your bike does go missing to report to the police. So please make sure you note down your frame number. So when you have a good setup, you've got your ground anchors, you've got your bikes daisy chained together and locked to the anchor, take some photo evidence of that. And also make sure you have up-to-date photos of all of your bikes if you have more than one or of your bike if you only have one. Um, the reason for that is if it does go missing, straight away you have an image you can share on social media or you can share with the police or anyone relevant to helping you retrieve your bike. But whilst you're at it, make sure you turn off your GPS on your phone if you're taking pictures of your bike at your property. So any of you that take photos for Bike Cave or any of you that take photos for Bike Vault on the Dirt Shed Show, make sure you turn off location services on your phone when you use the camera, or at least disable them just for your camera. Um, and the same goes if you use Strava or any sort of ride tracking apps that are available out there, there's a lot of them, make sure that you don't use it from your front door. Um, you can set up privacy zones on Strava, but I would still not completely trust that. I would go for a ride first, then start your official ride tracking, and then return at that point, and then return home. You really don't want any way that you can be traced back to where you live. Now, just a few last little things to say. If you have heavy duty power tools in your workshop, for example, it's a good idea to keep them locked away or perhaps in a different location from where you lock your bikes, just in the event that something bad could happen. Um, if you have any of those sort of feelings about any stuff, use your instinct. You know, close your blinds at night so people can't see in, make sure you've got cages over the windows, lock your doors, use CCTV, have alarms, have anchor points. Look after your pride and joy. But there you go, you can never be too secure. So make sure you look after your bikes, get some good quality locks, make sure your bikes are insured, perhaps even look into the realm of CCTV. Lock it, don't lose it. Uh, well, there you go, that's the basics of home security and all the things you should be factoring in to make sure your bikes are nice and safe. Uh, for a couple more useful videos, well, firstly, click up here if you want to learn how to install a ground anchor and use it correctly. And make sure you keep an eye out on GMBN Tech for the following video, which is all about locking your bike up in public, the styles of locks, and how thieves can actually break them. As always, don't forget to give us a thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. We love having you guys around. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And like I said earlier in the video, if you've got any suggestions for insurance companies for bikes on a global basis, it would be great to help all of the rest of the viewers out down there in the comment section. And don't forget to share and subscribe. Cheers, guys.